Hi, question number eight. The linear transformation T is such that R4 is mapped onto R3 is represented by the matrix M, where M is all of those, and alpha is a constant. When alpha is not equal to zero, the null space of T is denoted by K1. Find a basis for K1, five marks. Now, to be able to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to come back after having performed some row operations on this matrix and we're going to take it from there. Okay, I'll be back in a second. Now, after having performed uh, the operations, uh, here is what we've reached uh, at and uh, this is not the final uh, RREF, I mean uh, the reduced row echelon form, but at least this is a <coughs> row echelon form, okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to solve a system of equations. We're going to call it x, y, z, and t. And if we do that, uh, you multiply 1 times x is x, plus 2y, uh, then alpha z, and minus t is equal to 0. Second one is 2y, minus 3, minus 2 plus, minus 3, minus 2 alpha times z, minus t is equal to zero. And of course now, if we look carefully, we are told that alpha is not equal to zero. So if alpha is not equal to zero, it means alpha is something. So alpha z is equal to zero, meaning that z is going to be equal to zero. Substituting z for zero in this equation here, zero times z is 0 minus t is equal to 0 and I've got uh, 2y plus 0 here because 0 times the whole, whole thing here becomes 0 minus t is equal to 0 and if we solve this equation you should be able to get t is equal to 2y so t is equal to 2y and then if you replace 2y by t here x minus t minus t I mean x plus t, so x plus t minus t is equal to 0, meaning that x is going to be equal to 0. So we have um, a situation here. So to find the basis for k, okay, maybe we're going to do that later on here, but let us look at uh, what we've got is x is equal to 0, and then y is equal to half t so this is x y z and then t because if you send the 2 there it becomes divide y is equal to half t z is equal to 0 and t is equal to 2y so what are we saying is that um, it's going to be equal to 0 t over 2 0 and what is 2y 2y is t basically so if we remove and we put t over 2 outside okay so if we put t over 2 outside okay then you have 0 you have 1 because 1 times 2 over 2 is t over 2 0 times 1 is 0 and then you get 2 here because 2 times t over 2 is t and t is here right so basically we're saying then 0, 1, 0, 2. So this is a basis okay, for K1. And uh, all right, so that's it. So here's the answer to the first part of the question. Okay, for the second part to this question, we have um, the null space is equal to, z I mean, the alpha is equal to 0 and the null space is denoted by k2. So if we substitute alpha for 0 into the matrix that we obtained early on, we should be able to get 1, 2, 0, minus 1, 0, 2, minus 3, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. And I want to reduce this to its fully reduced to row echelon form. So maybe I can take row 1 minus row 2 equals to row 1. So in doing that, uh, 1 minus 0 is 1, 2 minus 2 is 0, 0 minus minus 3 is 3, 0 minus, minus 1 minus minus 1 is 0. And I've got 0, 2 minus 3 minus 1, and all of that. 
And again, what we can do? We can multiply row 1 by 2 to make these the same. So 2, 0, 6, 0, 0, 2, minus 3, minus 1. And from here we're going to produce a system of equations equaling the zero vector. So <clears throat> 2, 0, 0, 2, 6, 0, minus 3, minus 1, x, y, z, and t. From here, 2x plus 6z is equal to 0. So what we're saying is that uh, 2x is equal to minus 6z. <clears throat> okay. Then also I've got 2y minus 3z minus t. 2y minus 3z minus t is equal to 0. We know that t is equal to 0 from here. All of that is equal to 0. So t, one value of t could be 0 here. So, therefore, I've got 2y minus 3z is equal to 0, meaning that 2y is equal to minus 3z. Okay. Now, where do we go from here if um, we need to find the value of z? Okay, basically, if, um, what are we saying then, is that if 2x is equal to minus 6z, can we say that um, z, hang on, this is minus 3, this is plus, this is minus, so this is plus. Right, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So, right. Okay, so 2x is equal to minus 6z. So if I bring the z down here, I'm going to get 2x over z is equal to minus 6. Basically, z can equal to 2, because 2 divided by 2 is 1, minus 6, okay? So... That, that is one value that z can take, yes. Um, so, I think I've got the answer here now. So if 2x go to minus 6, I've got minus 6 there. And I've got um, 2y is equal to 3z, so I've got 3 there. Then I've got uh, z is equal to 2, and then t is equal to 0. And uh, therefore, a basis for k2, okay, a basis for k2 is going to be equal to what we just found, minus 6, 3, 2, 0. Now, for the last part of this question, determine justifying your answer whether k1 is a subspace of k2. If this is, uh, say, k2, if, if uh, k1 should be a subspace somewhere k1, okay, it's a subset like, you know, so then a basis vector for k1 should be should form part of the basis for k2 right so a basis vector for k1 should form part of a basis for k2 then K1 is a subspace of K2. Here we are. That should be the last part of the question. Take care.